Does Coco win against Wertheimers? Episode 10 starts with Coco grieving the death of her best friend, Elsa Lombardi. She blames herself for Elsa's death, feeling she was manipulated by Spatz. When Coco confronts Spatz, he denies any involvement in Elsa's death. Coco decides not to give Spatz any money, but Spatz threatens to expose Coco as a Nazi if she doesn't pay up. Later that day, Coco meets with the Wertheimers and asks their lawyers to draw out a new agreement with more favorable terms than before. The Wertheimers initially reject Coco's demands, calling them ridiculous and trying to intimidate her. However, Coco stands her ground and refuses to let anyone take advantage of her. She tells them that if they don't meet her demands, she will drag them to court, which will smear their company's name. Eventually, the Wertheimers relent and agree to Coco's terms. This is a huge win for Coco, as it will allow her to return to Paris and regain her old glory in time. Why does André go to the French police? After Coco returns to her hotel, she finds out that her friend Baron is going on trial for helping the Nazis and faces the possibility of execution. André suggests they return to Paris to testify and save Baron, but Coco refuses and says Baron must face the consequences of his actions. Spatz also visits Coco and demands the money she promised him. When André confronts Spatz, he physically assaults him and reveals to André that Coco was a Nazi agent. Spatz also accuses Coco of being selfish and willing to betray her friends for her own benefit. Spatz warns Coco that if the money isn't in his account by the next day, he'll return and, this time, snap André's neck for real. André and Coco's relationship suffers a rift due to the revelation, and André chooses to leave her and go back to Paris. Coco achieves her goal of getting her money back, but at the cost of losing her loved ones. Heartbroken, André goes to the French police and confesses everything, including the fact that his aunt worked as a Nazi spy during the war. He also informs the police of Coco's whereabouts in Switzerland, which leads to her arrest. What trouble does Christian Dior face now? On Christian's approval, Zenacker has begun poaching models and designers from their competitors, causing tension with many designers. Pierre confronts Christian in his office, calling him Judas. He continues that he has also filed a complaint against Christian to Leland, the president of the Couture Council, who will decide on any action to take. There's a chance Christian could lose his membership in the council even before he opens his own couture house. Later, it is revealed that Pierre has been chosen as the next face of couture by Carmel Snow. However, Carmel's first choice is Christian Dior, but like Cristobal, Christian too has refused, saying he's not hungry for media attention. Dior faces more trouble when most of his models and seamstresses leave his couture house, claiming they've been forbidden to work for him. This setback comes just three days before Dior is set to launch his first collection. Does Lucien Lalonde sanction Dior? Leong visits Dior and mentions that he is heartbroken that Dior left his house. However, at the same time, he also praises Dior for making tough decisions, like poaching models from competitors, something the old Dior would never have done. Lelong understands that penalizing Dior now would jeopardize both Dior and the future of couture. Thus, as an alternative, he asks Christian to send some models back to the house of Poteau at his own expense so they can complete their collection. It's clear that Christian feels uncomfortable stealing from his friends, but he feels he has no other choice. Lelong wishes Christian good luck with the opening of his couture house and leaves. Does Catherine return to Paris to support Christian? Despite initially refusing to attend the opening of Christian's couture house, Catherine changes her mind and goes to the show. She is swayed by the perfume Christian gave her, which reminded her of a time when France was beautiful and people were content, not living in fear of Nazis and hunger. Catherine is proud of her brother and says to him that it is time to show the world what Christian has created. The event is a success, and all of Christian's dresses reflect his true feelings, passion, love, and intimacy. His goal was to revive these emotions that were lost due to the brutality Paris endured during the Nazi occupation of France. 
Christian aimed to design the most beautiful dresses in the world that embody these feelings. During the Nazi occupation, creating dresses was Christian's way of survival, but towards the end, it became his mission. The Episode Review The new look was such an emotional show, diving deep into the talents of Christian Dior and other big shot designers from that era. It wasn't just about fashion, it gave us a peek into how fragile Paris had become during the Nazi occupation. The horrors of brutal killings and rape were all too real back then. Christian saw all this firsthand, and it lit a fire in him. He wanted to breathe life back into Paris with his dresses and designs. He aimed to bring back the feelings of love, passion, and intimacy that were lost in the chaos of war. And he succeeded. Not only did he revitalize Paris, but he also became one of the most famous and respected designers ever.